You know, a great uh, example of the power of um, this exponent stuff, and especially negative exponents, is the business of scientific notation. I should have like a little science thing, you know, scientific, a little white coat. But the point is that sometimes numbers are just really big and sort of difficult to sort of manage. In fact, this happens all the time when we use calculators. Because when you're using your calculator, in fact, a lot of times numbers are just too big for it to, the calculator to manage. So they use this notion of scientific notation. Just wanted to remind you of it really fast. So take this number right here. This is 2,609. Now, that's not that big of a number, but suppose you want to sort of capture its essence in some different way. Well, you see, technically, there's a little decimal point over here. In fact, there it is. Whoop. Now, of course, I could actually move the decimal point, but that would actually now force me to do something else, right? For example, if I want to keep that same number, but move the decimal point here, whoop, then I have actually have to multiply that number by 10 to actually move it back. But I'm not going to. I'm just going to know I'm multiplying it by 10. What if I want to now move the decimal point again? Whoop, then I'd have to multiply by 10 times 10, which is 100. Here, whoop, that would be 10 times 10 times 10, which is 10 cubed, which is 1,000. And so I could actually write this number as 2.609 multiplied by 10 to the third power, the 3 coming from the number of little sound effects I made. Those are mine, by the way. Whoop, whoop, whoop. OK, real easy. So the point is. Scientific notation allows us to write numbers that are big or very small as just a number that's between, uh, I guess, 0 and 10, so it'd be something point stuff, times 10 to the right power. So for example, 2,609 would actually equal 2.609 times 10 and what's the power? Well, I moved one, two, three places, so cubed. This is the scientific notation for this number. Okay, let's try some really dramatic numbers and see if we can up the drama. Okay, so let's say we take this number, 39870000. How would you read that number? I bet some people are really good at this. It looks to me like 398,700,000. That's what I'd say. OK, but there's a lot of zeros there. And it's a, I mean, it takes up a lot of room there. Right? If you were writing this out, you would you know, get carpal tunnel syndrome or something. So there's an easier way of writing this, and that is to use scientific notation. You could just say the important part, 3.987, and then just promise me to tell me where to put the decimal point. So where would I move it? Well, to get that decimal point to go way over there, what do I do? Oh, let's actually use it again, shall we? So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I have to put in here 10 to the 8th power. Now I want to point out something to you. If you actually plug this into your calculator, you know what it would say? It would say this. It would say, this is how it looks on your calculator. Your calculator font, pretty pathetic. You think about the technology, you know? This is how it would come out. This e that you see actually tells you what the exponent is. So this is a code when you see that to say, OK, the calculator, it's such a big number, it can't even hold it all. So it's going to pop it out in exponential notation. And what it's going to do is tell you what the exponent is. And you have to understand it's 10 to that power. You see that? And the reason I'm pointing it out to you is because this is how the calculator spits out answers, but you are not to spit out answers that way. If you write that as an answer, a lot of people will get very, very mad, and you will see that with a red mark and then a negative number next to it. So don't do that. So the thing to do is always write your answer like this. Even if the calculator spits it out like this, you're to convert it back. And also with these other font things, make the numbers nice and round too. Okay, this also, by the way, works in reverse. So for example, suppose you have a really, really tiny number. Ooh, it's so small. For example, consider my IQ. That would be 0. 0.000132, a very tiny number indeed. But why write all those zeros? I could just write this as 1.32 if I promise to tell you how many decimal points to move. But now I'm actually going to have to move the decimal point this way, which means I'll be dividing by 10 to some power. And remember, to divide by 10 to a power means 10 to a negative exponent. So that's where the negative exponent stuff comes in. Let's see how much I move it. I go 1, 2, 3, 4. 
So this is going to be 4, but a negative sign in front of it to tell me that, in fact, I've got to move it this way. I have to take this number and make it smaller. I've got to divide it by 10 to the fourth power, which would move that decimal way out to there. So there's scientific notation. Let me just show you that, in fact, scientific notation does have some value outside of these um, pathetic examples I've given you. Suppose you want to multiply two really big numbers. For example, suppose you want to multiply 24,000. I made that in advance. You want to multiply that by this number, 300,000. Wow, those are so big they barely fit on the whole computer screen because the web is like working really hard just to pop those numbers out. But in scientific notation, walk in the park. Because what would you do? I'd write this as 2.4 times 10 to the what? Well, let's see. 1, 2, th one, two 3, 4. And then I multiply that by 3, or 3.0, if you want to write it that way, times 10 to the what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, now I can just multiply everything together, right? So uh, 2.4 times 3, that's pretty easy. That's just 7.2. And then I've got 10 to the 4th times 10 to the 5th. Well, let's use the properties of exponents we know. If the bases are the same, what do you do with the, the tops? Think about it. You add the tops because I've got four tens here, five more tens here. Put them together, I have nine tens. So this is 10 to the 9th, and that's the answer. That is to say, it would be 7.2. 2 times 10 to the 9th, or 7, 2, and then a whole bunch of zeros, 8 more zeros because I move one over here. So you can see that, in fact, this is actually an easy way to actually deal with numbers where you've got long tails of zeros in the front or a tail of zeros in the beginning, and all because of the exponentiation and especially because of negative exponents. You're now experts on scientific notation.